In this example, we're going to use graphs and algebra to uh, approximate the smallest magnitude n that satisfies the formal definition of the limit. The limit that we're looking at here is the limit as x goes to infinity of a rational function 3x over the factor x plus 1, and that limit value is equal to 3. Our epsilon given is 0 0.1, a small uh, y distance. So uh, first, let's kind of get a picture here of what's happening. Uh, this is a rational function. So uh, what we know about rational functions is uh, we have a horizontal asymptote for rational functions whenever the degree of the top is equal to the degree of the bottom, like we have here. And that horizontal asymptote then is the ratio of the leading coefficients. So we do have three on the top, a, a one for the leading coefficient on the bottom. So this end behavior here um, with the limit as x goes to infinity, with that answer being three for the limit, that does make sense because we do know that our rational function has a horizontal um, asymptote at three. So um, when we're graphing that, we do know that we have the horizontal asymptote that we're dealing with. So we'll go ahead and put that in. And that happens at three. And the other thing we know, or two other things that we know, we know that we have a zero or a root whenever the uh, top is equal to zero because that would be when the fraction is equal to zero. So 3x equal to zero is telling me I've got a root whenever x is equal to zero. So that's going to be um, one point on the graph. The other thing we do know about uh, rational functions here is that we have a vertical asymptote wherever we have a root of the denominator that doesn't cancel. And uh, so that would be where x plus 1 is equal to 0. So at x equals negative 1, we know that we've got a vertical asymptote. So um, our graph is going to fit in here like this for the relevant piece. It goes through the root, approaches the horizontal asymptote. The other piece is actually up here. So we'll go ahead and mark it in there. But that part's not going to really need to be looked at because really what we're looking for is as x is going to infinity. So we're looking here at the, the right end behavior. So... Um, we start, uh, since we're given an epsilon value because we have a finite limit, uh, we have to deviate from our, uh, our limit value by adding and subtracting that epsilon value. So we'd be looking up at 3 point, um, sorry, not 0, 1, 3.1. And if we subtract, we would be looking at uh, 2.9. Now, look, if we were to track out here to the right for the, um, what's happening at the y equals 3.1, we're never going to run into the graph. Now, had we tracked out to the left, um, that piece would have run into the graph. Uh, this other piece that's going off um, as x goes to negative infinity, we would run into the 3.1. But that's not going to prove to be relevant for us uh, since we're looking as x goes to positive infinity. So the one that is relevant is what's happening when we track back from the y equals 2.9. So we hit the function and we track back down to the x value. And we need to know what that x value is. And so that's where we're going to, um, that's what we're going to be doing algebraically. So it says use the, al or use algebra to get the x values. So uh, we have um, a particular y value, an output value of 2.9, and we need to know what the input value is that goes with it. So if we set the function equal to that 2.9, so we'll have the rational function 3x over x plus 1, and we're going to set that equal to the y value there that we want to um, track back from. So we need to be able to solve this equation. So the first step would be to get rid of the fraction there on the right-hand side by multiplying both sides by the denominator. So we'd have 2.9 times the factor x plus 1. We do need the parentheses there because the very next step is going to be distributing across the parentheses. So we'd have 2.9x plus 2.9, and that's going to be equal to 3x. So I'm going to move the, just to keep everything positive, I'm going to move all the x terms to the right-hand side. So that leaves me with 2.9 is equal to 3x minus 2.9x would be a 0.1x. Divide both sides by a 0 0.1, and so we would get x is equal to 2.9, or, or divided by 0 0.1. If we um, get... I don't, you want, don't really want to say get rid of the decimals, but if we want to move 
the decimal on both the top and the bottom over by one, what we're really doing is multiplying top and bottom by 10. So if we did that, we'd have 29 over one, so that would be just a 29. Okay. So what that's telling me is um, if I go to the 3 minus epsilon, the only part that to the uh, right-hand side of the graph is going to touch the graph, what I would do is get as the corresponding x value 29. Okay. And so what that's telling me is if, see let's continue to extend that 2.9 horizontal line, if I surpass the n value of 29, then my, um, my end of my graph is within that horizontal bar there, close enough to the y value of 3. And so my answer here is, um, I mean, it says the smallest magnitude n. It's because, really, if I pick 29, well, 30 would work, 31 would work. Other sh strange numbers, as long as it's bigger than 29, all of them would work. But see, 29 is the first one that works. And so that's where the smallest is coming into play. And so we have um, uh, here as our final answer, n is equal to 29.